Well, as you can see, guys, I've been busy again. Um, I've just finished uh, welding one side of this new pack. Now, I'm hoping this is going to be the best pack I've ever, ever built. It's certainly, I've used more uh, strip on it than I've ever used before because this is going to be drawing a fair bit of current. So I need to make sure all the links are good. Um, at the moment, I've used probably five and a half meters or thereabouts of uh, 0.15 millimeter by eight millimeter um, uh, strip on this. So it's a fair amount. <clears throat> every battery has at least two connections going to it, or near enough every battery. So I'm pretty happy that this is going to uh, provide good power. That's the easy side. Now is the hard bit. Doing the hard the other side because that's the bit that bites. Because at the minute, because these are linked between there and there is around seven volts. Sorry, between there and there is around seven volts. Yeah, sorry, there you can see there the my diagram how I did it. Um, I find you have to draw these things out. You really, really have to. If you don't, you're going to have major problems. Apart from anything else, this was about the fourth or fifth attempt I made to get the parallel serial links as good as possible. You're never going to get a perfect. Perfect would be all straight, parallel, and all individual serial links between each cell, but you can never get that because you're always going to get bunches of cells that are sort of a bit odd. So you just have to do the best you can and make sure you have enough uh, tracks going across for the serial links. But by doing it the way I've done it, I'm pretty sure it should be fine. Right, so like I always do when I'm welding batteries, I have, uh, as you saw in the previous so earlier, this uh, well, let's that bad up. The bottom side is all welded, and so you can see the gaps between that I have to fill on the other side. So, what I have to be careful of is that um, now that I've welded this side, it means that this side can bite. Uh, and what I mean by that is, if I was to take my multimeter and put it between that cell, you get this in focus, that cell and that cell, I would get 7.5 volts or something like that, because these batteries are currently at about 3.7 volts, thereabouts. So if I was to accidentally drop a piece of this across between these cells, there would be a very light, bright flash. Something could go on fire, something could melt. Basically bad stuff happens, so we don't want to do that. And because I'm a complete idiot, and that's the first thing I'm likely to do is to drop it. We just seal that off. So what I'm going to do now is make all the parallel connections on this cell group. And then when I've done that, I'll pull this back and then make all the connections between these groups. So this, all the parallel connections on these cells, just start up here a second, make all the parallel connections between these cells, all the parallel connections between these cells and all the serious links between them. And basically just move across the battery that way when I'm doing it. So, first step, get these ones welded, and then pull the, pull the stuff back, cover up here, up, reveal these ones, and start welding them. So I'll start doing that now. As a last double check before I start to weld um, across batteries, when the other side, when I've already welded the other side of the uh, battery pack, I always check for voltages between 
the cells and as you can see there's no volts between those two cells so I've gone across all of these cells just double checking you want to be a hundred percent certain that there's nothing no voltages where there shouldn't go shouldn't be voltages but the last thing you want to do is to put a piece of nickel down across those two and start to weld them and suddenly discover that oh dear there's a voltage there a couple of other tips to uh, bear in mind when you're welding is um, what I always like to do as well is to cut a piece of cardboard which is approximately the right size or the size of the battery and put it underneath the battery this just makes it easier to slide it around but one thing to be very careful of is if you are doing that um, not to cut out a piece of cardboard which has black on it if you have cardboard that has black on it that is basically um, what do you call it toner I think it's just the black is put on it's just uh, the same sort of toner that you get in a uh, a laser printer and that is conductive so don't put your battery onto black cardboard that's a bad thing to do you're shorting out your cells if you do that it's not a dead short but it's a high resistance short so don't do it um, another tip is on my welder I have a fan and the reason for that is that these things get very hot as you're as you're welding and if I keep a fan blowing down over it down over the place where I'm welding uh, it's just connected with onto the it's a 12 volt fan connected to a 12 volt battery there you go so by doing that it helps a little bit to keep the thing cool as you can see you've got this this side is now all welded and shielded off so I can then start welding what I'll do is I'll go straight across there so instead of doing the parallel welds um, individually with each group I'll just go straight across and then straight across and then straight up and down and basically put as many uh, strips on this as I, as I can so when I get that done I'll come back and show you what I've done Sorry, I meant to say as well, just in case you're wondering why it is that some of these still have tabs welded on them and some don't. Well, basically, when I was taking the old battery apart, um, I discovered halfway through the process that it was probably easier just to leave the original tabs still on the cells on the top and cut around them because, um, as you can see, these cells are button top. And they are an absolute horlicks to to weld to and some of the welds were pretty good and i thought frigate just leave them there and weld on top of these bits of uh, tab because in the end it's not going to make any difference there's still a welded to it and the welds that i'm doing um, it just makes it much easier uh, it means I'm not blowing holes in the top of these. Some of these already have holes blown in the top of them. And it's um, not ideal. It's not a major issue because in the end these are just domes uh, with little vent holes in them. So an extra vent hole isn't going to make a major difference. But you'd rather not blow holes in them if you can help it. Okay, so if you're wondering, that's why. Right guys, so that is this uh, battery pack completely welded. I don't think there's anything more I need to do. Just flip it over here. And let me see the other side. So as you can see, it's a lattice work of strips that have welded onto this pack, uh, which means that every single cell has at least two strips going to it. Um, either two different directions or if it was um, a cell like uh, there's a couple of them on the other side um, where there's only a single path going to the cell I've put a I've doubled up the, the uh, doubled up the strips like here there's two strips going along here and uh, here there's 
two strips going along that full length. So every single cell has at least two strips going to it. And there should be no excuses this time for battery sag. <laughs> Does it? At least let's hope not, if these cells are any good at all. They are approximately 34 milliamp per hour. And I could be wrong, but by my maths, if they're 34 milliamp per hour and there's nine of them, that makes this approximately a 30 amp per hour pack. Is that right? Nine of them in parallel. Each of the parallel cells is added for current and for voltage then the, the doesn't doesn't change. So nine times thirty-four, it's approximately thirty. Uh, 30 to 31 um, amp bars is what this pack would be. At least that's what I'm hoping for. So that should be ample for me to get, I don't know, maybe uh, 15 miles without pedaling, 30 miles pedaling, probably more. I'd like to think you get a bit more than that using when I'm pedaling it and using this just to assist. Um, but at least I have a good pack that I can actually. Give it a good blast if I want to. So hopefully we'll um, we'll be back in a little while and get the BMS fitted and get it wrapped up and on the bike and get it on the road. So that's the next step. So bye for now. Hello again, guys, and this is almost the finished battery pack. As you can see, we've got the BMS attached to it, and you can see LEDs flashing there as it's trying to balance the cells. Um, this apparently this BMS is an ANT BMS. Now, I wasn't, I didn't realize that when I bought it, but the great thing about that is it enabled me to install the VBMS application. On my phone that's vortex bms um it's only six pounds and it's absolutely awesome uh, it gives you full functionality you can do all sorts of things with it um first thing i had to do was configure this for uh 14s because by default it's 16 so i was able to change that in the in the app and got it set to 14 bm uh, 14s and then I started the uh, balancing facility on it. Um, you can turn all those things off and on as you wish. So just going around showing you here. If you're wondering why I have it sitting in the middle of the floor as far away from everything else as possible, it's because I've just built this battery. I've just uh, welded it and soldered it and uh, got it all together. And if it's going to go on fire, it'll probably go on fire now. So <laughs> basically, I put it on the middle of the floor in the middle middle of my garage, as far away from everything as possible, just in case. You never know. Um, but very very pleased. If you're wondering what this wire is for, it's actually you use these two wires to uh, turn the BMS on. Um, using something like this, it's just a, a cell I happen to have handy. Uh, a voltage between three and twelve volts, something like that. Um, apply it for a second or so uh, on those two wires, and that turns the BMS on. Um, this connection is for the uh, the temperature sensors. I've put one. And here and one in here. I've no idea if those are the right places to put them. Uh, I'll confirm that later and it can easily be moved if need be. Um, I haven't attached a charging cable yet but having said that it's the same cable for charging as it is for um, uh, for powering the batteries so it's not a it's not a big issue. I could either tee off that connection 
or I'll probably just solder on a a smaller lighter cable somewhere at some stage um just to to uh, get a charging connection on it <clears throat> but at the moment it's it's uh, showing 51.6 volts on the BMS app um and 3.648 is the lowest cell and 3.707 is the highest cell or not cell parallel group but uh so very pleased it's it um looks like i haven't cocked it up for once uh or not completely anyway so uh, i guess the next step would be once i'm happy this is um definitely balancing and everything is working as it should um i shall get it into the bike uh i might wrap it in something i'm not sure we'll see maybe put some foam on either side of it i don't want to put too much around it so that um because I'm, I'm concerned of it overheating um so i don't want to insulate it too well but on the other hand at the same time i don't want it to don't want it to get damaged either but um anyway it's it's well wrapped up with uh what do you call that tape can't remember uh sort of hot high temperature masking tape so it's well wrapped up in that and uh yeah very pleased like i say the next step is to get it into the bike and get a test ride i'm looking forward to that all right bye for now hi guys right well i'm just back from a six and a half mile or so uh ride on this thing um it's got the new improved 14s 9p uh battery it's got the ANT BMS. I've taken out the switches and things. Still have some tidying up of the cables to do and wiring up of the lights and so on. Um, but very, very pleased with the result. Even with uh, a crappy, cheap, rubbish uh, controller that came with the kit, I was still easily able to do 35 miles per hour um even going it was on a slight uphill may have been a slight back but uh tailwind not sure but basically 35 is easily doable with this and cruising at 30 no problem at all um so brilliant piece of kit i'm just like i say i'm just back um the last sort of half mile or so was flat out the whole way and that's cold which is good that's cold, no temperature there, everything nice and cool. It's a cold day today, it must only be three or four degrees, but yeah, everything is performing 100%. Brilliant, very happy with it. So, there you go. That's um, not very, there's not very much more to do with this now. Um, uh, I might at some stage change the controller, upgrade that um i'd love to get cruise control sorted out so that's probably the next thing in this to go to happen on this bike and to get the lights wired up properly uh put a wee switch on the handlebars so i can switch it off switch the lights off and on but apart from that i would say this is very well very close to being finished um or as finished as any project ever is but anyway that's that's where we are for now So if you have enjoyed these videos, thanks for watching. If you haven't, eh, your loss, my gain. <laughs> Bye for now.